Good afternoon, Melissa. Um, I know you're a freelance customer agent and also doing some training in that area. So I have a few questions for you today. Great, so okay, far away. Okay, so now that the UK has left the EU, what implications that have for Irish importers and exporters? Okay, well, they left the EU, as we all know, on the 1st of January this year, and I suppose people thought things would be quite simple and easy, but they're now a third country, which means they have to declare and we have to declare anything coming into the country um, from them. And likewise, so with imports and exports, we have to do all this, these declarations. Now, it sounds quite daunting. Um, but in fairness, there are, is a way around it and businesses need to get on with their livelihoods and this is what I kind of promote. So um, it is possible that they tried to circumvent it they, and businesses have thought, listen, can we deal with other countries within Europe instead of the UK? But that's not happening. So basically, it's a case of declaring all the goods that are coming in across the border. And there are people like myself, customs um, agents that do it or people can have um, the agents in-house if they have the resources. And with regard to this, you would have things like, you, you would have to have very detailed um, in, um, invoices that the UK, your suppliers in the UK would need to give to you or vice versa with them. Um, you'd also have commodity codes um, attached to all the goods. You're, you'd have to know your goods of origin. Um, and also you need to have your transport details in order to be able to have the, to put this process in place. But, but as I said, it's not beyond um, anybody's capabilities. It's just a new learning process. So I hope that's helped in some way. Okay, Melissa, that's very interesting. Um, you mentioned commodity codes. What are they? Okay, well, every item, every good in the world everything has a commodity code attached to it and in the main the first three digits of the, or the first six digits of that code rather would um, be globalized so everywhere in the world would have the same one and then it can extend out to 10 digits for imports or eight digits for um, ex um, exports but the thing about it is that everything from a button to a combine harvester they all the commodity code, code explains what that is um, and it also that attracts the duties if there are duties on your goods. So as an importer, you know, if you're bringing in these things and had been before Brexit, now possibly you'll be, um, you'll need to understand that you now have to pay, may have to pay duties, which of course you'll need to hand on to your end customers. And you will also, of course, um, have to pay VAT now when you're bringing in goods from the UK, which wasn't um, the norm before this, um, once everybody was in the EU, but there will be a 23% VAT on most goods now coming into Ireland. So if you're a business, that's a great thing. Um, because, well, not a great thing, but it's easier because you can, um, you can get that back through the revenue system. But if you're an individual, it complicates things because individuals can't obviously get their VAT back. So you're adding 23% onto the price that you're paying of those goods in the UK. So um, that's really, well, commodity codes are linked up to all of that kind of thing. I went off track there a bit, but that's what commodity codes are. Very good. Um, do all products need to go through a declaration process? Absolutely. I mean, there's a certain ceiling of, of, of uh, products if they're a minimal amount, but in general, um, all your products need to go through that declaration um, process. If you're a business in Ireland and you're bringing in anything um, that you want to sell for, further on, you need to do your declarations. And as I said earlier, I think you need to either do them in-house if you have the resources and the skills and the training, um, but, um, or you can outsource that. But absolutely, you need to be on top of these things because you don't want your goods to be seized at the port. Number one, they can be seized and 
stored that may add on extra cost to you while you get it sorted out um, or also, also they can be destroyed which is something you definitely don't want and you'll still have to pay costs on that so the declarations that are now in place between the UK and Ireland are an absolute must with regard to imports and exports. And um, another very good question is, how can a business complete these declarations? Okay, well, as I said, I mean, you need to have the ability to be able to communicate with revenue. So you'll need software packages. And there are a number of companies that do that in Ireland or indeed Europe. Um, but also you will need the skills and the training um, and the experience and knowledge as well. Customs is a huge area, which I found out myself when I began the whole journey. Um, it's not as simple as it seems, uh, filling out forms. There are an awful, lot of, an awful lot of coding attached, an awful lot of um, acronyms attached to all of this. So you really need to get into the nitty gritty um, of all of this, this area because it can be time consuming and you don't want to be toing and froing. So um, you need to know that your invoice is going to have all of the information you want on it. You need to have then, as I said, the software to be able to input the declaration um, and the knowledge. So you do up your declaration and then you send that into revenue and revenue come back to you with a routing. Um, hopefully, on the, on the, if, if it's rejected, there's a problem with the declaration and you need, that's where you need your area of expertise, expertise needs to be fairly up there so that you know what what lines to take, what issues um, have gone wrong for you. But um, so then when, if it's not rejected, it comes through then with an orange, a green routing, which is all good. Goods are ready to come through, happy days. It can have an orange routing, which isn't the worst in the world. They may need just some extra information on the goods. Possibly you left out an, inv um, an invoice or you left out a health, health cert um, if the goods are agriculture. Or they could also uh, give you a red routing, which is when they want to do a physical check on exactly what's in your in in those goods or in those trucks coming up across. So was that clear for you? Melissa, that was very interesting and very, very informative. Thank you. Kind of understand a little bit more about it. It did seem a little bit scary, I'm sure, for people, but that has really explained quite a lot. So thank you very much. You're welcome, Julie.